In this video, we want to look at GPS and how it works. I'll start by reviewing the learning outcomes for the module. Then we'll look at the overview of the GPS system. We'll look at what are called the segments of the GPS system. We'll look at how it all fits together. We'll try and figure out how you can determine location and get a correct value of time from the satellite information. And then we'll look at the navigation message itself, the, what the GPS satellites are constantly sending to Earth and what that looks like. Finally, we'll summarize and we'll look at what's up for the, uh, the next meeting. So the learning outcomes for this module are, you should be able to name the segments that comprise the uh, GPS, the Global Positioning System. You should explain the principles behind the GPS operation, including how many satellite signals you have to receive to uh, figure out where you are. Know what the term pseudo range means and how that distinguishes uh, how that's distinguished from the actual range to the satellite. Uh, you should understand how the GPS satellites uh, work on the same frequency but uh, can be distinguished, and uh, we'll talk about that on th Thursday's meeting. Uh, part of how that works is using these gold codes, which you probably uh, saw in the reading. So we'll talk about that in the next meeting, and then we'll also talk about the augmentation services, like uh, services like wide area augmentation service, local area augmentation service, and how those are uh, implemented and how they improve the uh, location estimation. So GPS is a, a system of satellites and ground stations and users. Uh, that lets you know where you are uh, somewhere uh, on the surface of the Earth or even above it, uh, in uh, space even. It was originally called NAVSTAR GPS, NAVSTAR for Navigational Satellite Timing and Ranging Global Positioning System. It's been operational since 1994. So the image on the right, you can see the uh, nominal constellation, which has 24 satellites. They're in six orbital planes. Each orbital plane is in a 55-degree uh, inclination to the equator. Uh, there's four satellites in each plane, so they're spaced to basically within each uh, uh, orbital plane, they're six hours apart, but each orbital plane is four hours apart from each other. Um, so this is to give you coverage uh, wherever you are on the Earth so you can see multiple uh, satellites, uh, uh, five to eight at any point from any uh, place on the Earth. They're, the satellites are in a uh, 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 twice a day orbit. Uh, uh, it's not a geosynchronous orbit. It's only uh, 10,900 nautical miles instead of the 20 something thousand nautical miles you need for a, a, a synchronous orbit. Uh, but it is, uh, but they do cover, uh, uh, goes around uh, every 12 hours basically. So the Earth rotates underneath the satellite uh, twice or at least once while the satellite goes by twice. GPS system is made not only of the satellites, uh, uh, the orbiting space vehicles, the SVs as they're known in the GPS world. Uh, the history of these is that, uh, there, again, there's 24 operational right now, or there's 30 operational right now, but there's uh, 20, only need 24 in service. And through this uh, uh, graphic from the uh, gps.gov, you can see some of the, uh, when these were, uh, uh, the various services that are, come through the GPS system uh, uh, were made available. So starting, I mean, there was a block one before these block two A's. Uh, uh, none of the block two A's are still operational, the leftmost satellite. The block two R, there's still nine operational. And you can see that's when you started getting the uh, course acquisition uh, on L1. It had what's called the precision code on uh, L1 and L2. Uh, uh, but these were designed to launch about uh, seven and a half years. And you can see some of nine of them are still operational and we haven't launched one since 2004. Uh, there's also these new uh, uh, Block 2RM, Block 2F, and then the new Block uh, uh, GPS 3 and 3F, uh, uh, which was a successful launch on Tuesday, uh, uh, the uh, uh, 6th of uh, uh, October. Uh, so uh, that's someone that had been waiting to launch uh, uh, like uh, the previous weekend on Friday and Saturday, but they weren't able to launch. Uh, that's a, a Block 3F. Uh, so you can see as, as you, uh, go to later releases, there's increased functionalities, uh, 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 encoded uh, military signals, this new uh, civilian signal, the L2C, uh, uh, and the uh, L1C, and this, this whole civil uh, 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 code, uh, which we're not going to talk about in a lot of details, but it replaces what the, the legacy navigation uh, we're going to talk about later in the uh, hour here, or in the, in the slides. The control segment is the ground-based segment. It's uh, GPS is run at a Shriver Air Force Base. Uh, it's uh, in the Second Space Operations Squadron, which is part of the new Space Force, uh, Space Delta Eight, which is sort of their uh, uh, larger chunks. 
Um, this used to be uh, the 50th Space Wing uh, in the Air Force. Uh, of course, the Space Corps, Space Force is a segment in some ways of the Air Force, the same way the Marine Corps is part of the uh, Navy. Uh, so it's under uh, Navy operations. Uh, the ground stations are used, I mean, there's some precision atomic clocks on uh, at the ground stations and they're used to make sure that all the space vehicles share the same concept of time. Uh, the ground system knows where the space vehicles are. It updates those through the almanac. Uh, and so it lets uh, the, the space vehicles know more about where they are. Of course, the space vehicles know where they are by talking to each other also and doing the same kind of uh, calculations that we're gonna do on the ground to figure out where we are. The user segment is folks like us with uh, cell phones or pilots with the GPS and the flight deck uh, or anybody using GPS anywhere. Uh, uh, so they receive, you have these little handheld uh, or, or larger receivers that get the GPS information from the satellite. Uh, and then there's also these uh, wide area augmentation services or uh, 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 space-based augmentation service and local-based or ground-based uh, augmentation service. So the concept here is that the satellites and users have the same concept of time that's called GPS time. GPS time is slightly distinct from universal time. Uh, universal time, uh, uh, GPS time was initiated in sync with GP, uh, universal time, but GPS time doesn't do any leap seconds. So I think uh, GPS time, uh, universal time is updated like 16 or 17 times uh, since the uh, GPS time was uh, uh, instantiated. Uh, so the concept is the satellite should be able to transmit the time uh, and their location to the user. The user has uh, a clock, uh, and so the user uh, can measure the time uh, duration, the interval that it took for the message to uh, be received, and from that estimate the distance to the satellite. Uh, using the measurements from at least four satellites, uh, you can determine uh, uh, your position and uh, the amount of time error in the local clock relative to the uh, GPS clocks shared by the, uh, the space vehicles. Uh, it also has the model of the Earth uh, with lat long altitude, and it uses the WGS-84 model that we talked about previously, and it also has to have knowledge about the shape of the Earth, the uh, geo where the where there's uh, uh, can be gravitational anomalies and the like, and uh, so. So basically, it's a matter of, um, Try to imagine these as spheres. I know it's uh, uh, difficult to do with this two-dimensional image. Uh, if you look at SV1 and SV2, the intersection between those two spheres would be a circle, right? The intersection of two spheres is a circle. Uh, and, and the radius of that sphere uh, um, to the user is called the pseudo range. And it's a pseudo range because the timing measurement at the at the user is not as accurate as the timing measurement of the satellite. So there's some error in, in it. Um, so we've got these two pseudo ranges, R1 and R2, and those two intersect to form a circle. So we don't know exactly where we are, except we're on that circle. And so when we add a third measurement, R3, now we can disambiguate to one of two points, either the point on the surface of the earth, or in this case, a point in deep space, in space outside the orbit of the satellites. Uh, and so we can use that to disambiguate. Uh, so three measurements to uh, uh, get yourself down to uh, where you are on Earth. You could honestly do the disambiguation with a fourth measurement if you were doing like space vehicles and you're not sure whether it's uh, uh, between the satellites uh, and the Earth or whether it's uh, uh, outside the uh, uh, orbit of the satellites. Uh, so you could do that with a fourth measurement, but you also need another measurement to correct the time. Uh, uh, so. We, I've already sort of talked through this. You get two satellites, you get the intersection in a sphere, uh, a sphere is being a circle, and then you get two points from three satellites, and then you can use the fourth measurement to correct the time error. We'll see uh, some of that uh, here in a little bit. Uh, you'll see it actually in the exercises. So you need at least four, and if you really had to disambiguate, then five equations. But once you know where you are on the surface of the Earth, then you can use that uh, knowledge to know that you're not at that extra point outside. And so once you get down to, uh, and once you get your time updated, uh, uh, so you can really get down to three measurements on a So the navigation message, which is what is constantly being sent uh, uh, by out by these uh, uh, space vehicles, the service vehicles, is just chock full of information. It's coded into different segments, but it's got a very common uh, uh, structure here it's 
37,500 bits long, and it's transmitted at 50 bits per second. So it takes 12 and a half minutes to transmit the entire navigation method. So every 12 and a half minutes, you get a new message. But it's chunked into these 30 second frames, 25, 30 second frames, uh, which are each 1500 bits long. So, and each frame is made up of five subframes. Uh, uh, so each subframe is uh, six seconds to broadcast. And they're just 300 bits long. And they're structured uh, uh, into uh, uh, 10 uh, 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 words, 30-bit uh, uh, words. Uh, uh, so you can see the uh, 300 bits there. We'll come back to the, the structure of the subframes in a minute. But the first subframe in each frame uh, has information about the satellite, uh, how, whether it's operating successfully and also what the time of day is uh, on the satellite. Uh, there's a lot of the, 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 the timing uh, about the satellite and, and, and what it's capable of. The second and third frames have what's called the ephemeris data. That's just the location of the satellite, but this is down to details. I mean, this is attitudes and uh, uh, you know, what, where it is in the orbital plane and which orientation it's got and just a lot of details uh, that might be useful in the calculations, but aren't really the core uh, when you come down to the concept. And then the fourth and fifth frames uh, um, include information about the whole system. Uh, um, the fifth frame uh, includes uh, uh, what's called the almanac for service vehicles 1 to 24, and then the rest of the service vehicles are in subframe 4. Uh, each, so each subframe here, or each frame comes along once every uh, 30 seconds. And the frame, uh, uh, there's a different almanac information for each frame. So in the subframes, for the uh, uh, for each subframe here, it's different from one frame to the next, from subframes four and subframes five. And you're getting different information about different satellites. So over the course of the 12 and a half minutes, you can get information about the whole constellation. You know about every satellite. So your little phone there is holding information about every GPS satellite, what's its status, what's its orientation, what's its orbital uh, uh, situation, where is it, and the like. But the key to the information really comes in the, in the info that's in the subframe, and then there's going to be additional timing information that comes not from the data in the subframe, but from the actual way that the message is sent. We'll talk about that in the So the subframe is uh, uh, 10 30-bit words. Uh, Every uh, uh, word in the subframe has 24 bits of data and six bits of uh, parity that can be used uh, to check uh, uh, and correct uh, uh, any errors in the data. The first word of every subframe is what's called the telemetry word, and it has a, a specific preamble uh, that says this is the telemetry word and this is the start of every subframe, so it can be used for synchronization. And then uh, uh, Biggs here calls it the, 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 the telemetry message, these 14 bits. The GPS spec just calls it reserved. Uh, so I'm not really quite sure what's in there. There's a couple of uh, uh, flags here. One of them is reserved, but the other is the integrity status flag. And so this is, gives a message to the user of this satellite's data is usable and you can trust it, or this satellite's data is crap, you shouldn't trust it. Uh, and then you get the uh, uh, parity bits on the end. The sec uh, so that's the uh, telemetry word. The uh, second word is called the handover word, and this has uh, information about the time. Uh, uh, GPS uses a concept called time of week, and uh, time of week is incremented in uh, one and a half second intervals. I do not know what the design decisions were for this instead of just using ordinary seconds. So since the subframe only updates uh, once every uh, 30 seconds, I mean, each one of these subframes gets six seconds, uh, but the, the subframe, each one of these words gets six seconds, but each one of these, uh, uh, excuse me, the subframe, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's 30, it's 50, 50 bits a second. Uh, uh, so, you know, you're, you're getting out of these uh, 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 300 bits in six seconds. So yeah, every, every subframe comes in at six seconds. So this handover word is updated every six seconds. So you don't need the least significant bits. So it's, it's, it's a 19 bit count. Uh, in the uh, time of week to go from zero all the way till it rolls over. Uh, but you only need the uh, most 17 significant bits here because the bottom ones are going to uh, click around before you get to the next uh, uh, subframe. Uh, and then there's a, a, 
subframe ID, and then there's some other information. The rest of the eight words in every subframe have specific content that depends upon which, whether you're in the uh, first subframe, the second subframe, et cetera. Uh, so subframe one is where you have the week number, which is, goes with the time of week and the handover word. Uh, uh, in the coding scheme, more information about the service vehicle health, information about how to correct for propagation through the ionosphere. And then the uh, subframes two and three, again, have ephemeris data. Uh, uh, and there's what's called an ephemeris data index for data that is uh, uh, archived. So you, if you're using the old, index, old data, you can just use the index. And then you have new data with the ephemeris data. And then the almanac data is in subframes four and five, as we talked about before. So that's the structure of these messages that are coming uh, from the satellites to the Earth. And if the handover word has a second and a half resolution, uh, that's not quite good enough. Uh, I mean, that's, uh, that's even worse uh, than it sounds. I mean, the satellites have a nanosecond resolution, uh, the atomic clocks on there. Uh, and, and so uh, and our phones probably have, you know, microsecond resolution for the clocks that are uh, in, in our phones and in other uh, receiving device, user, user segment devices. Uh, so at some point we have to get from the, inf the, the time as coded in the information uh, through this message here down to a more precise time. And that comes in through the message and the, the pseudo random noise sequence that's uh, in, implemented by these gold codes and that's used as part of the modulation scheme called spread spectrum modulation to implement something called code division multiplexing, much like uh, almost every contemporary cell phone uh, uh, uses these days uh, uh, as a way to put multiple sources of information on the same channel with the same carrier frequency. So we'll talk more about that in the next uh, uh, slides, uh, but for now, let's summarize what we've done here today. So there's at least 24 operational GPS satellites at any time. There's 30 right now, and they send time information and position to users. Uh, the overall, uh, that information of position is updated once every 30 seconds. Uh, the, the, the telemetry data and handover word are updated once every six seconds. We, we noted you need information from four satellites to figure out the local position and to synchronize time. And in the next meeting, we'll look at this issue of how do they all transmit on the same frequency and how we can get better timing than the six second uh, resolution we're getting out of the uh, message or the 1.5 second out of the handover word, uh, et cetera.